everybody. Welcome to another video episode of Between the Sheets podcast here on the United Broadcasting Network. We're on the first and third Friday of every month at 7 p.m. Pacific. Thank you for joining us. I'm your crazy ringmaster. Sounds kind of s and I kind of like it. I'm Gayanne Bruno, and we have a host of beautiful women and an amazing guest this evening. Um, and please call in 323-524-2599. Uh, please like our Facebook page. Uh, Between the Sheets podcast, and follow me on Instagram, QTE Brett. And I actually paid for Hinge, so if you want to date me, go to Hinge, okay? I don't have an assistant, because um, I am so single. Um, but anyway, we have these lovely ladies. Um, I will introduce you to them. You, Some of them you know and love, and, um, and then there's some of them that you knew and love, and then she disappeared, and now she's back like a bad penny but we love her anyway. So let's start with Mara Shane. Mara, Mara, Mara. Hey guys, I'm so glad to be here and happy holiday season. Um, I can't wait for the show tonight. Miss you guys. I love your hair, by the way. Thank you. It's really nice. Whatever they did to the front of it. Yeah, they just it. blonded me up a little. It looks absolutely Ooh. stunning. So very sensual, yeah. very Jessica <laughs> Rabbit in a Blonde is short away. Ooh. Thank you. <laughs> and then we have dressed as Mrs. Claus this evening in the holiday spirit, all the way from the UK, our straight woman. And I don't mean I don't mean not funny, I just mean not <laughs> well, She Noble. means that too. No, she can't. <laughs> Yes, good evening. I've decided to start emptying my fridge because I need to fill it for Christmas. So this is some leftover margarita and strawberry mix. It's quite nice. Yum, it looks good. Mm. And then the we have the bobbing head in the left circle, so square, which is um, Jenny McNulty. She uh, can tell you what she's doing, but she's everywhere all over the internet with her wonderful show, getting amazing guests. Um, hello, Jenny McNulty. Hello, ladies. Hello, hello, hello. Wonderful to be back. I am, uh, uh, the show I'm doing is, uh, just, I'm doing my regular in-house comedy chat Monday, Wednesday, Friday, trying to, more than a talk show, it energizes your mind, body, and spirit. And the last, it's been really fun. The last 10 shows of the year are, I'm trying to end it on a positive note. So 20 reasons, 20, or 10 reasons 2020 didn't suck. So. Ah, yes. <laughs> okay. What are you up to about six? Um, no, we've done three. So I can't four. wait to hear those. The election was one. The election was the first one. Um, and the second one was uh, pot laws being legal. And not only is it legal in many states now, it's essential here in <laughs> California. And uh, today was a reimagination. People are reimagining themselves and their work workplaces and their careers. So more to come, seven more, tune in. Cool. <laughs> Anyone know on this call who Veronica Lake is besides me? Yes. Thank she's you, She's a beautiful Cara. blonde actress. Correct. But yeah, I'm sure she's long dead. Well, Jenny's a beautiful brunette, but I love when Jenny's hair goes in front of her eye because it reminds me very much of Veronica Lake, the peekaboo look. That <laughs> cheeky. Oh, and, that then there, and then there's Cousin It. So. <laughs> 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 and then lastly, and then but this is before I introduce our lovely guest, um, you know, she has eight names, um, but we are supposed to call her Roxanne Rosen. She went away Yay. for a while. Um, she did not go into any sort of rehab or anything. <laughs> she was benefiting her um, education and uplifting um, herself to new levels. So Tristan, fuck, see? I'm going to call you Tristan. I still will call you Tristan. Welcome back. Welcome back. Hello. Thank you so much. Yeah, I have five. Roxanne. And you're a blonde-ish. That's a new thing. So I just got my hair done today. So okay. What have you, so, so just briefly, briefly, because I know you go on forever. Briefly, tell us what you have been up to. Oh, taking every certification you can possibly think of to help heal the mind, body, and soul in uh, neuro-linguistic programming. It's just been wonderful. I'm um, just, just doing a lot of internal healing and being able to provide that and serve that back to help others. Well, that's a whole bunch of crap, but thanks! <laughs> 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 oh, 
holidays. <laughs> Happy holidays. I'm kidding. You know, I, I, I'm just, I'm just bothering you because you know, I mean, Cara and I are part of the goddess group, and 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 we also mm -hmm. sort of talk that way. But it's, it's, it's. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you that you, um, that you, that you went on that journey, and um, you are becoming a grown up. So congratulations. Wait till you hit fifty. Um, <laughs> then it all goes downhill again. Um, and I sixty. Then it goes uphill at 55. So it just, well, after 50, it goes up and down and up and down and up and down. So, th so thanks for coming back. That's so much Thank fun. Thank you for having me. <laughs> all right. Now, drum roll. So that's all I have. We're not in the studio and we don't have all the fancy schmancy shit. Um, we have Dawn LaFrida as our guest. She is president and CCO. CCO. Same thing. CEO. Dentex Central Inc. DBA. Denny's restaurants. Um, Denny's has those grand slams, right? We do. Yeah. So, you know, <laughs> Dawn didn't always start out this way. Dawn started her career at 16, at 16, making her way from hostess to waitress. So, you know, she, she was the, most of like us, you know, she wasn't born with a silver spoon. She worked her way up. Um, she did a lot of stuff and we'll talk about everything she did. Cause I mean, reading a bio tends to get really boring. Um, she lives in Texas, correct? I actually met Dawn through I, Sharon Gless. That's right. My BFF. Exactly. And um, she actually helped Sharon coordinate the logistics of the call because Sharon isn't technologically savvy. She's um, technologically challenged. Exactly. Um, but in any 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 event and i'll have dawn pretty much tell her own career how she started um you know she is now very successful mm -hmm. and she owns many mcdonald mcdonald's god forbid that's my i wish i owned some mcdonald's as now, well god, you know what you need to anything with the drive through today would be good correct because right. yeah because we'll talk about this as well um so you know you're very successful um and so you started out, did you know, I mean, obviously waitressing, hosting, did you know you wanted to get into the food business at all? Or was that just like a job, you know, like I'm going to get a job. So, you know, the, there's a lot of gifts in growing up poor. Mm. You know, you have to uh, get a job. So I happened to land in food service and, uh, I, my mom worked at Denny's. So naturally I got a job at Denny's and, uh, I got an opportunity at some point and I was working in Fullerton, California. Uh, and there was a point in time when Denny's bought out a chain of restaurants. You might know them, Gail, a uh, gay and it's called uh, colony kitchen and hobo Joe's mm -hmm. and they were going to convert them to Denny's. And there was just one restaurant in globe, Arizona that it was an underperformer. They didn't think they could do anything with it and they sold it out of the chain. And so a friend of mine, and I, we were both working at Denny's. We took money off our credit cards and tips and we bought our first restaurant. Wow. Yeah, off That's credit amazing. cards. Amazing. Yeah, it was, it was, uh, you know, it was a giant leap of faith. I was 23 years old. And then uh, some misfortune happened in Texas. It was Texas's misfortune, but my fortune. And that was that oil went bust. And Denny's had some stores that were just underperformers. They were doing gangbusters during the oil boom. And then they went from doing gangbusters. It was the Beverly Hillbillies to nothing. And so they said, you know, we've got these four dog stores in West Texas. Do you want to take a crack at them? So uh, we made a good deal and I packed up my car and I moved to West Texas. And wow. uh, well, you don't take a girl from Orange County, California and put her in West Texas. <laughs> uh, I, I did not fit in very well. Oh. You know, what was, was that like? Texas, and um, you know, I thought every airport was like LAX, and uh, that that was that was wrong. But I'm driving through West Texas. I'm getting. I start off. You know, I'm in Orange County. Get to San Diego. Get to El Paso. And I get to El Paso, and from El Paso on, all you see is tumbleweeds and old beat up pickup trucks. And I stop at this one gas station, and I think I'm actually I'm in El in Albuquerque or somewhere in New Mexico and in the when gas stations had guys that actually filled up your tank you know you didn't do it yourself and the old man says to me so Missy where are you headed and I said well I'm headed to Texas 
And he says, well, what are you going there for? All they got there is steers and queers. And I thought, oh, oh God, what have I gotten myself into? Oh my and, uh, you know, it turned out all very well for me, but I was very naive. And uh, I learned I didn't last in West Texas very long. I had to get to a bigger city pretty quickly. And interestingly enough, not being able to survive in West Texas made me grow my company and make it to what it is because I was so used to a big city to survive in a small city. I had to beg to buy more stores or build more stores, which enabled me to grow my company into what it is. What did you do if they were failing with the, with the decline of the oil industry? Like what, what, what did you do to, to step in and then make them become successful? So what happens is that when you have, so Denny's corporate at that time, they were based in La Mirada, California. And, you know, when you have a big company and you have layers of supervision and they're flying people in and they're not hands-on operators. So there's a lot of opportunity for theft. There's a lot of extra costs in travel. You know, so if you're hands-on, you're actually working the restaurant. So you take area managers out of the equation, you take travel out of the equation, and you hope to build the business by being hands-on, touching the guests, and, you know, what, uh, you know, really just outliving the economy, waiting for things to change. And what I've learned about West Texas is it's either feast or famine. And when oil is booming, you have tons of business, but you have no help because everybody's working in the oil fields. And then when the oil's not booming, you have plenty of help and no customers. So it's an art to do business there, but I still have my stores there and it's been good. And, you know, I've, I've been homesick for California since I left, but for the very first time in all the years I've been in Texas, I'm happy to say I live in Texas because since COVID has hit, my friends that have restaurants in California are just suffering and I'm suffering too, but at least I have 50% capacity while they're completely shut down. And so I am so grateful at this moment that I at least have 30 in my restaurants here in the state of Texas. You know, mm -hmm. we're completely shut down in Illinois and it's, you know, you're down 80%. Oh, wow. So it's a matter of survival in these stores where you get capacity versus no capacity. Right. Wow. Yeah, it's a tough time for people. And I just read today, you know, one of the, uh, one of the entertainment companies, you know, they went ahead and they provided outdoor seating, outdoor dining for the, uh, you know, the crew to eat, but they shut down the restaurant across the street. And so, you know, you take livelihood away from one industry and you give it to another and it's a very unlevel playing field. And so it's a tough time to say what's essential and what's not. Everybody needs to work. Everybody needs to feed their family. And it's hard when government steps in and says what you're able to do and not do. And I know when we were originally shut down, it was for 14 days to slow the spread and 14 days has turned into nine months, which is really going to be at least a full year. Yeah. Show so us. it's interesting. And it keeps going. It keeps going. No, it's the gift it. that keeps giving. <laughs> yes, that's yeah. true. Yes. Uh, it, going through this time and just having all the businesses just trying to survive and doing what they can. Like the Denny's by my house. Um, I live right here in Tustin and they they have just outdoor um, seating now. And that's just right. how one's just trying to survive. You just and that may change soon. Uh, is yeah. that the one on uh, uh, you're in Tustin and Tus on Red Hill or where? Seventeenth Street. Seventeenth. So I grew up in Orange. Yeah. So very very close to there, and uh, I've eaten at that Denny's many times. But I just heard yesterday that aren't you guys going to shutdowns? That's what they say, but I've been actually very grateful for living in Orange County. Uh, oh, yeah. Orange County has been better. San Diego's trying to shut down as well. It's just... Well, in L.A., we're just... You guys are dead closing. in the water. No, You're we're closing. I mean, like, I mean, like, as stupid as it is, I mean, I, as I said, I had my, a photo shoot today, and my... I know this is dumb, but my tire mm -hmm. lights were on. My tire pressure light was on. Here. And I literally... 
was driving to find like mountain tire or one of those like gold year, good year, whatever, just to drive in so they could just check my tire. And everything along the main boulevard was all shut down. It was only five o'clock. It was 5 p.m. And it's like everything is shutting down. And it's like, I don't understand. I mean, I get it. I mean, this COVID thing, it's for real. Okay. I mean, I just heard from a friend of mine that, you know, her two, her aunt and her uncle just got hospitalized right now, but you know, mm-hmm. they are elderly, but I, I mean, I know this is not fake. I, I do. I mean, but I also don't know how we stop it. And is the vaccine supposedly is the vaccine, the only thing that can stop it, prevent it, you know, I mean, like right now, as you say, the economy is just like, like, especially in LA, I mean, people are losing. I mean, every time you drive past the street, like the whole commerce of mom, pa um, establishments, they can't afford it. They're closing down. Yes, they are. And, and it's, it's everywhere on some level. Oh, even, you know, LA, let's just say is the worst, but even in restaurants that are open, say you take mine, for instance, even though I'm open 50%, that doesn't pay the bills. I, you know, when this is all over, I'm seriously considering writing a book about the effects of COVID. You know, every day we are bombarded with issues of COVID that you just would never expect. COVID has become the excuse for everything. everything. Every bit of bad behavior, every reason not to show up, every excuse to give bad service, I mean, it is just unbelievable. Erratic hours. Um, you you could call the unemployment office and sit on hold for twenty hours, literally twenty hours. I mean, my employees will tell me. I mean, just crazy stuff. There's, it's, it's just carte blanche for for everything. So we have no normalcy. You know, you don't know what hours your bank's going to be open. If you can go into the lobby, you don't know if your normal drive through is going to be open that day because somebody might have gotten sick and they might have to close it for two days. I mean, it's just, it's just crazy. The reality is you have to take it seriously. You do because, have to take it seriously. You know, and it's like, you know, and we do have to wear the masks. I mean, we do have to follow protocol, but it's like, I wish there was some way to figure out how to do things where it's not as much of a huge impact economically and especially for the smaller businesses and i'm not saying like denny's isn't getting or mcdonald's or any of the big boxes aren't you know suffering because you all are because there's there's expenditures that need to be paid you know well, and right so you need to staff yeah. Right. So the fast food, if you have a drive through, you're obviously doing far better than if you have a dining room because drive throughs are allowed to be open, but it, it is an unlevel playing field. So in California, for instance, you can go to Target and you can go to Starbucks and you can sit down and have breakfast, but you can't go to Denny's or IHOP or a mom and pop, a Cracker Barrel, but, but who's to say that you can't go to Costco and sit down in their food court or Target. Who deems you essential and non-essential? Well, I mean, just and- so you know, because I, I I do Costco, but what they did, I just went like two weeks ago um, or a week ago when the whole first ordinance came in, they took up all the benches now. So now you just go on the line to get the, either the pizza or whatever they have and people, they, and people walk away. But they get to sell the food. Yes, they do. They do. Wait. Now, did, like Denny's ever consider, for example, I mean, you guys had, I mean, well, outdoor dining, obviously, mm-hmm. like everybody but else. They just did. took it away in California. They just took yep. it away. They did. In LA. In LA. Yeah, Pasadena. Except for so. in the entertainment industry now, you can have outdoor tents to feed your people. But that, that's what the big controversy is this week. Yes, they did allow outdoor dining and, and a lot of restaurant operators made that investment in tents when they didn't have the money because they've been shut down and now they shut that down. And the truth is there are no known cases of COVID happening in the restaurants. Exactly. So the them are. That's the, the main source they're getting it is dining in a restaurants and being in small environments. You're That's not where they're getting it in restaurants. Uh uh-uh. There are no known reported cases in restaurants, bars, not restaurants. I have, you know, 85 restaurants, not one case. 
Uh, they can't they can't prove any cases that they're getting it in restaurants. Now, what happens is you get employees who've been out to parties. They've contracted it. They didn't get it in a restaurant. They've maybe brought it in. But here's the thing. I mean, in restaurants, I mean, as I mean, like, for example, I do work in the entertainment business. OK, I have 15 shows. I'm on this set one day, this set another day. I'm tested three, four times a week because each show and each production has a different protocol. Um, so like with restaurant employees, I mean, are you guys testing any of your employees? Mm -hmm. We temperature check, we ask questions. Uh, we don't COVID test, but we have protocol that we have to report and we have safety uh, standards that we have to follow for the health departments. So we have guidelines and we have all the social distancing. We have the um, gloves, we have the masks and we have the sanitizers. So we, we think I mean, we get governed by the health department. All right, so here's my thing. Like every state um, has their own rules. Obviously. Actually every county. County, but like look at Florida. I mean, they're acting like COVID doesn't exist, okay? But I mean, wouldn't, it, I mean, do you, I, I mean, one of the things I think is it's being spread is because there's no uniformity to what the rules are. So if, you know, someone from Florida who is, you know, doesn't have any symptoms, but has it because they don't know, they come visit their family in California, you know, they have just maybe infected five or 10 people. So I just don't understand. Like, I think it's, it's county, state, whatever, but I mean, I'm thinking if there was like a federal, like a law that was federal, which we all follow. Yeah. Everybody has oh, this please law. don't even go there. More laws. We don't need more laws. Well, I'm not yeah, saying it's, more it's, laws. It's, I'm saying the same laws, the same thing. So every state is following what the are you, same a pattern. <laughs> so. You know, it's a really touchy subject. Um, because if you say to me, Dawn, you're going to follow whatever rules Gavin Newsom says and you're gonna be out of business in six months, I'm gonna say, fuck off. I agree 100%. I yeah. just and you know, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna practice my safe environment. I'm going to make sure I follow all the guidelines. I'm gonna space my tables apart. I'm gonna educate my employees. They're gonna follow the protocols. If you feel unsafe dining in my restaurant, don't come. But exactly. don't make me for the 35 years I've invested I have debt. I have 3,000 people I try and give jobs to. Don't take that away from me at this stage of my career. Don't put me out of business because of this virus. If you're afraid to go out and eat, don't go out and eat. Like that. Yeah, um, are you, I have to ask you, Dawn, um, so you're not based in LA or is one of the, I'm sure, I'm trying to figure out if the Denny's in LA you know, had to close down or so all the Denny's in Los Angeles people? County had to shut down. Then they got to open to outdoor dining and now outdoor dining has shut down. Mm -hmm. God. Yeah. It's so unfair because this is literally Gavin Newsom saying you can't make you money. Can't make you money. can't have your life. And you still have to pay your yeah. property taxes. You still have to pay your rent. You still have to pay your utilities. You still have to pay your loans to your lenders. You're going under. And, you know, does government have the right to do that? Nope. Well, as you said, Dawn, I mean, my goodness, all these in little restaurants, the lucky ones that had an outside space or maybe a car park, and they invested all this money so that we could all still have a normal life. And now that all their investments are just sitting in the trash. Until and nobody they... wants to make anybody sick. And right. there is statistics that show there are people that are more compromised than others. Um, you know, I have eaten out two times a day, every day since Mother's Day, because I don't cook. I know I'm in the restaurant business, <laughs> but I don't cook a thing. And nobody in my family has been sick. Uh, there's four of us and we support the restaurant industry. And never have I felt uh, unsafe. I went into one restaurant that wasn't practicing social distancing. It was a mom and pop. We left. Yeah, exactly. I think that there's a, a, a part where we all have a brain. 
like what you pointed out, Don, there's people that are immune compromised. I feel for them. God bless them. Um, they, they will probably be the ones to stay home. The people that are not immune compromised, they can go out. Like what you said, you just walked in that restaurant. You saw, hey, you know what? This isn't safe. You left. I've done that. I've left. But then the establishments like yours, where everything is six feet apart, there's there's outdoor, there's indoor. Yeah, you watch where people have their masks, if they have their gloves. You don't touch door handles. You right. you know, you do all the right things. Yes. People's livelihoods, everything that they've worked for. I'm a small business owner and I've watched my business get crushed and now it's regrowing again. It just, you know, government doesn't have the right to say we can't work and, and then they don't even pay us money to survive. I and know. imagine this, imagine this, imagine if we didn't have this vaccine, how many years can we sustain? And even with this vaccine, things are not going back to normal once we get the vaccine. Oh no, definitely not. They're not. It is going to be, there's going to be a recovery period and people are going to be afraid for a long period of time. And we have to let people have choices in their life. We have a responsibility to be safe and to make our environment safe, but government does not have the right to control us and make us go out of business, not feed our families, go into debt, go into bankruptcy. I mean, it's, it's not fair. It's not fair 100%. And unfortunately- No, when we were told, when we were told close 14 days to slow the spread, okay? I kept all my employees. I lost $1.6 million overnight. I lost a million dollars in food. Four hours to close, a million dollars in food. Oh my God. Okay, I still had to pay those bills. Right. Yep. And I and I it's a million six, it was a million six in payroll because I didn't want to in two weeks when I was allowed to reopen not have payroll, not have employees. Yeah. So you're already in the hole that much money. Well, then two weeks turned into four weeks, turned into six weeks, turned into eight weeks. I mean, what do they think we're made of? We have flu every year. So I'm sure concurrently we have this new kind of flu, this COVID flu, and we have maybe the regular flu that comes and changes every year. It comes back. Next year is going to be no different. Exactly. When is this going to end? It has to well, end. I know this is extremely nice. dangerous and it's very different, but I think we know more about it now than we did. And less people are actually dying now than did die. I mean, it was very, very bad early on, and I get that. But we have contained the dying. Some people are still dying. But, you know, like we've had some cases here in San Antonio that people are trying to overturn the death certificate. Because, for instance, we had a kid that died in a car wreck. But when he was checked into the hospital, he was COVID positive. But he really died from a fatal car right. crash. But they had to put the cause of death as COVID. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there's just a lot of stuff well, out there. I that hear, that's, I hear that's through. happening. Everyone you're listening and watching, I should say, to Between the Sheets podcast, a little bit more controversial than usual. Uh, call us. We'd love to hear what you have to say. 323-524-2599. 323-524-2599. Um, Everybody's, everybody's got an opinion about this and everybody's sensitive about it because no one should ever have to die because of a, a disease. And I certainly in my restaurants never want to kill anybody and, and we never have. Well, that's good because I like Denny's. <laughs> well, I don't know anybody in any restaurant who's ever died from eating in a restaurant from COVID. I don't know. And I'm very tied into the restaurant associations, all of them. Well, I just think that if you're going to draw the line there, then like, how is that different really from, I guess the only thing that separates the difference from the mall being open and the markets and not eating is because people are taking off their masks when they're eating. And that's the only thing I can see. And whereas if you go to the mall or you go anywhere else like that, you have to have the mask over your face like all the time. Although that's not really true because some people at the mall walk around, you know, with their coffee and they take their mask down. So, yeah. Um, but see, here's the thing. At the, so you're at a table, but before anybody goes to the table, that table sanitized again. Nobody <laughs> sits at that table without it being sanitized and whoever cleans the table has a mask on. 
So I think you're more at risk at a grocery store when people are picking up product and putting it down, they've touched it with their hands or they've, you know, the hands I think are worse in a grocery store than you sitting in a restaurant at a table. Well, so I'm more, I'm more I mean, careful there. I mean, the thing is like for me, I mean, you know, like everyone knows my mother's ADH, she's COPD and on dialysis, you know, and, uh, and she lives with me. So and I, I'm you know, highly careful. So, you know, it's like, like I will go to the market. I mean, I used to wear the glove things until I heard that the gloves are just as, they're probably a more carriers than not. But I mean, I'm forever using hand sanitizer wherever I go. Like even on the set today, when I was doing a photo shoot, I mean, you know, I'm like, if you touch, the minute I touch something automatically in my head, it's like grab the hand sanitizer. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. you know, and, it's, I think, you know, yes, I think all of us have to be responsible for ourselves. You know, we, we have to wear the mask. We have to take those um, precautions ourselves. And I do believe, you know, if you don't feel comfortable, then you have the right, you know, not to go out. Don't go that's out. That's right. Yeah, that's right. And, you know, if I, my mother in law lived with us, she recently passed away, but if she was alive, you know, my kids would have a different set of rules than they have now. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, everybody's household is different and you have to respect but what everybody wants to do. And I, and I recognize that wholeheartedly. I mean, you know, I've got employees who live with a senior citizen or they have a spouse with cancer and we all have to respect what's going on in everybody's individual life. And we make, and we make allowances for that. It's, you know, it's a new world right now. But I don't believe people should lose their ability to make an income. No, not at all. We don't know how long it's here for. How long I know. We, can we go? Plus, the I think, aren't we on the verge of being completely, everything being shut down yes. again? Here in LA? Really? Yeah. Yes. I mean, it's like going back to March. March yeah. When it started, you know? I mean, we've got a curfew now from 10 p.m. to 5 a.m. Unless you're, like, essential. And... You know, it's like that, that actually bothers me. See, that's more dangerous than anything. That's what you've got to do with anything. If you're in your car, say, or you're walking down the street, what, what does that mean? What is that? They're trying so, to discourage people from, you know, going to the uh, clubs and the bars. And well, I get the clubs and the bars, but if you take people and you let them space out over larger periods of time, then they're not on top of each other. So you just take a Denny's, for instance. If you're mm -hmm. open 24 hours, people spread out over 24 hours. If you close at 10, oh, we're going to close at 10. We better get to the restaurant before they close so more people are on top of each other. I just, I, I don't understand the logic behind that. And like we're closed. I have uh, 10, re uh, 10 restaurants in the state of Illinois and we're cl completely closed in the entire state. So Even Illinois, so Illinois is more mm -hmm. astringent than California. Yes, completely closed the entire state. Probably expected wow. to be closed till March. Worst How? I can't believe they can do this to people. Yeah, that should not be allowed. Don, you make a great point. We should have that choice, not the government. The government um, should not have any right to force us to close. Should we be responsible? Yes. Should we we wear masks? Should we use hand sanitizers, disinfecting? Yes, but it should be our choice whether or not to work, to not work, to go in an establishment, to not go in an establishment. And no government should have that right to literally put us into bankruptcy to lose everything. Well, that's okay, the but thing. There's so much at stake. It's, you know, I mean, in San Antonio, where I live, we have 2.8 million people and we have lost, uh, 1,580 people, I believe, which is a lot, but it's 0.006, mm -hmm. which it's a very small, minute percentage in comparison to 2.8 million people. And we've shut down our complete economy. I don't want to see anybody die. I really don't. But I don't, there are people dying of other reasons that are non-COVID related because of the shutdowns, you know, depression, suicide, suicide um, yeah, child suicide. Abuse, wife abuse, you know, just there's so many things going on. Heartbreak. Pardon me? You know, heartbreak. I haven't seen my sister for 14 months. Yeah. 
I want to go home. So, so are they determining, I think from watching the news, they're determining the shutdowns based on the flooding of the capacity in the ER, right? Yes. So they say that, they say that, but I don't know that to be the exact case everywhere. So in San Antonio, for instance, our ERs weren't full, but we did take some people from El Paso, which might have filled us up more. I know we're not full in every place in Illinois, but our cases are increasing. So the fear of the hospitals filling up is the worry. And the I mean, I heard, a worry. there's no doubt that is, a I mean, worry. you know, the thing is but like, if you take New York, for instance, they're only what at a 2% and they're shutting down again and they're not full. Don, your, your video is bandwidth. Yeah, it's yeah, now you're back. There we go. I mean, but even so as well, I mean, more people are being tested as well. I mean, there's more testing kits. Yeah. People are being tested. So obviously, like the cases are rising because maybe those people, you know, because people are being tested more. So if people yes. are being tested more, you're going to get, you know, maybe more positive cases where maybe three months ago more people weren't being tested. Right. So I mean, it's all enough. I mean, I mean, it's it's happening. Don't get me wrong, but it is a numbers game as well. You know, I know, but what's determining the shutdowns are what's going on with the ER, supposedly. Correct. And LA, I mean, you know, I get, I have that Citizen app thing, and it's like there's only a certain amount of beds, and you know, we're supposedly going to be doing some an award show in January, and they're all worried about that, and where we're going to hold the award show. You know, they're not. There's like, okay, wait, but we could use this portion of this area to have the runoff of beds just in case the ER is full. So it's, you know, and, and you know, I don't know if, I mean, you know, look, there are a lot of people that I see without masks that thinks this is, you know, a conspiracy theory and a hoax. There are a lot of people that don't take this seriously that I've seen. Yeah, that's um, wrong. That's wrong. That is wrong because everyone still has to practice the safe measures, but they're not. And, you know, and, and it's, it's, you know, and it's just, Mind no one can go in a restaurant unless you wear a mask. So who are you saying are not? You, you can't go in these places, a restaurant or a shop, without wearing a mask. So no one's not practicing it. But they no, are there's a lot of people. Park, on if you go to a park, and I have been driving a park in the open air with the sunshine and the trees. But if someone is in close proximity, that is where you have the distancing. I mean, you know, look, if you're in a family unit, that's a family unit. But it's when these idiots are up in the Hollywood Hills houses doing a 200 to 400 person party mm -hmm. and they're not having any masks because things, yeah, are closed. things are closed. So they're renting out these big mansions of Airbnbs and still doing their own parties. Why do I, I know even this? Though there's a because lot. I know half the people. I'm <laughs> been invited to these freaking oh parties. Oh my goodness, you <laughs> These okay. people aren't worried. They're not worried. <laughs> they don't care. But see, me as a person who gets invited to these things, I am making the decision not to go. Would it be fun? Yeah. But am I going to not go to and me. put myself in that situation? At, for what? To what? Have a couple of shots of maybe, you know, whatever, tequila or whatever the hell I would do. For what? Do you, so, let me, sorry. No, it's okay. But that's what I'm saying. It's like, you've got people that are responsible, mm -hmm. people that are making the choices that they need to make for them. And then you've got these um, irresponsible people. I was going to use another word, but yeah. ir that's a nice one. But irresponsible people just totally disregarding this stuff. So then they get this shit. Maybe they get contracted with it or they have it and they go out into the public and you think because they're not if they're not practicing safe stuff there, you think they're going to be practicing any more safe stuff here? No. Nope. So I was going to say, do you think Gavin Newsom, his intentions are to do everything he can do to stop the spreading, or do you think, like a lot of people out there, think that he's doing? I don't even understand why people say COVID is a, a conspiracy with money. I don't understand that. Maybe because somebody I'll tell you why that that part I know. I mean, not that I know everything, but I, this is what I've heard. Because it's about it, it comes down to the pharmaceuticals, the pharmaceuticals, 
and who, you know, like who's going to get the deal, who's going to get the patent for the, the COVID virus, because whoever gets the patent for the first virus that's get issued, they're going to be fucking millionaires, trillionaires, you know, and, you know, and, and that's, and that, but that's how things work. It, it, it's like, you know, even with any drug, you know, any drug, they make the, they make the brand name drug. And I know my mother is COPD. There are two necessary medications that are non-generic. And again, she's on social security or whatever, part D Medicare, whatever the hell that is. But even with that shit, she's still paying six, $700 a month for that medication that she needs living on, you know, whatever the social security benefit is, which is shit. And then in the beginning, it's okay. Then you go through this thing called the donut hole, which pretty much in English means you are so fucked. So you are now paying almost the entire price of this drug that maybe is a thousand or twelve hundred dollars each. And then you go back into something else at the end. So the pharmaceuticals truly run this company. I mean, they do. They run this company. Um, and it really isn't about helping the elderly or helping the people in need. It's, you know, otherwise, you know, what's the deal with the patent and not making things generic, or even if it's not generic, making it affordable to people. You have people dying every day because they can't afford medication. Yeah. I know. What, what, what is Gavin's drugs? Huh? What are, are the leaders supposed to so that they can invent more drugs and on we exactly. go? I mean, look at that ending. guy with the, what is it? The HIV thing? Was it HIV or something? With the kid, some kid bought it and he was charging like, I don't know, $1,500. Yeah, nut stuff. Um, it's, still, it's still that expensive. I have employees on it and we have to pay, it's like 1500 a month for HIV medication. Do you think though the, the the leaders like for instance Gavin Newsom should just what is their alternative if not to close things they're just supposed to just say do what you want No you don't say do what you want but you put out guidelines Exactly You don't put people out of business but you put out reasonable guidelines that you know make it you know it's gone so long and we've been so misled that people are starting to revolt Yes yeah. And I think, but no also way. part no of it, I also think part of it is because we weren't, because no one knew what really, like, how to deal with this. There, and I think for so, you know, there isn't any, there still isn't any really, like, besides the masks and stuff that the guidelines, you know, no one can tell us how to stop this. Now, if you get the vaccine, you know, I mean, if you get the vaccine, the vaccine vaccines are not from my understanding vaccines are not a cure it's more of a preventative and maybe i'm incorrect because i'm not a physician no i think it's a preventative so you know if you've got it'll COVID, stop the spread it'll stop the spread but then again flu vaccinations they don't know what flu is going to come up in 2021 we're talking yeah. normal flu not covid flu so what they do is they guesstimate however this, those people do this is we think the strains and you get inject now i've never done a flu shot in my life okay but they get injected with these strains but there have been times when the strains have worked and they just were totally off base and a lot of people got the flu because they were injecting for the wrong thing because they made a boo-boo not that so it's just really crazy i mean the whole thing's so just scary. crazy yeah, well, it's scary. You know, when I got the flu shot once, I got the flu like within 24 hours. So I am a little bit worried with the COVID vaccination that it, what could happen, the side effects to that. They say it's the same. You could get the flu, but that it's not going to harm you. It will be out of you and there's no downside risk because it, it can prevent you from getting COVID. And COVID is so much worse than the flu. If Okay. I mean, it could yeah, be, I think you know, it could times. be fatal if you fall into that terrible group. Yeah, but now, that's the thing. You don't know if you're going to be one of those victims. That's the hard right. part about this flu. But the you could survive is, it with no problem or you could die. Correct. But the thing is, yeah. it's like right now without a vaccine, because people were saying, oh, once you get COVID, mm -hmm. you can never get it again because you've got the antibodies. And, and that's bullshit because there are people that I've known that, got, that have been twice with yep, COVID. Twice. So I, twice. Wow. 
two mm-hmm. times, two times around. Well, and in this year? Yes, same year. So oh. the thing is, you can, you can get it a second time. But just because you've had it, obviously you have the antibodies. Now, you know, I mean, obviously, is it something in you as a person with whatever your DNA structure is and you, that it's like, does it work? So my thing is, if you get the vaccine, then it's preventing. But if you can get it again, like how many times do we have to take this freaking vaccine? Is it like every three months you got to get inoculated again? I mean, what's the lifespan of the vaccine? Well, and- I don't know because it's it's generally yeah. they've developed in it ten months. I mean, exactly, like, and that's what and that's what. And that's what, that's why Don said, you know, early on, you know, just because, well, she didn't say this, but I am inferencing that just because a vaccine is done, doesn't mean that we go back to normal. We don't. We don't know. We have a long period of recovery ahead of us. People are going to suffer with this for a while. There are states that are going to be in deep economic trouble for quite some time to come. Yes. You mean from the from all this shutdown? From the shutdowns, businesses are going to suffer. Uh, there's going to be a huge amount of vacancies in real estate. So take New York, for instance. I mean, 30% is already vacant. These companies are learning how to work remotely. They're learning how to have their employees off-site. They're not going to pay for all this high-cost real estate anymore. The restaurants that have closed permanently, they're not going to be able to afford to come back. Uh, an example would be the the flagship Victoria's Secret in Manhattan. It was paying nine hundred and eighty thousand a month for rent. They moved out. When do you think a tenant like that's going to come back? It's going to be a long time, and there's no foot traffic anymore. So there's it, it's going to be a long road to recovery. If you think of the entertainment industry, the cruise ship industry, the airline industry, they said that uh, after nine eleven, it took um, uh, there was some formula, maybe three years before people started traveling again. They're estimating five and a half years till normalcy after COVID. So we are in for a rough ride. And that's why the more we keep things shut down, even if we start opening, we have to learn how to live with this. We have to learn how to go out safely. We can't be locked up indefinitely. And I know, Jenny, you haven't said much about any of this, but we do have to learn as a group how to survive together and how to respect each other's space and beliefs and understand what each individual family might need to go through and need to respect how people need to make money and earn an income. And I work with people who, who are hourly workers. They live paycheck to paycheck. It's important to them. If you're in the restaurant industry, which is a great industry because it allows people to have jobs that maybe don't have an education. And it's not easy for those people to find work. And when restaurants are closed, it's a big deal. So you have to think of, of the bigger picture. So we have to find a way to learn to work with this and not just shut down. It does far greater damage than the disease. Right. And, and Don, you, you just hit the nail on the head. You know, we have to learn how to work with this. We have to learn how to move on. We can't stay shut down forever. We can't be hiding in our homes forever. We are going, the, our governor is just destroying our economy. He's destroying our small businesses. He's destroying everything. This isn't what you do. We can't stay locked in. We have to put, at what Don said, policies, procedures in place. Everything has to be sanitized. Everyone has to wear masks. We can't just let our entire economy go. I mean, what there is, is so right? much anger out there. I am watching. I mean, you know, I had a situation in one of my restaurants where a guest came in without a mask and our, our hostess said, sorry, sir, you need to wear a mask. And he says, I don't want to wear a mask. She says, I'm sorry. It's a policy. If you come in our restaurant, you have to wear a mask. She says, if you don't have one, we're happy to supply one. He punched her. <gasps> I mean, there is anger out there. Wow. And I mean, what a lawsuit that is. Well, it is. And, you know, and then it's a lawsuit on both sides because then your employee wants to sue you for a hostile, unsafe workplace. I mean, 
Did she? Your employee wanted to sue you for well, a hospital? No, but that's ultimately what will happen. Okay, well, you guys have put a lot of conjecture into a lot of what you're saying here, and you're right. I haven't said anything because it's <laughs> still not like me to be controversial, but I couldn't disagree more with everything that has fallen from each and every one of your lips. I really feel that we, you can't say, we just need to wear a mask and do this because we're not. We're not doing that. We're not. All it takes is for us to completely shut down for about a month. Literally, everyone shut down for a month, and this would be over. It wouldn't be able to spread, but we can't do that. And we That's not true, though. That's not true. Done that. You cannot shut yeah. down gas stations, hospitals, food. So you cannot 100% shut down. So we did that. We shut down. We stayed at home. We shut down, but they still let the grocery stores, the gas stations, the hospitals and stuff still spread. How do you completely shut down the country? How do you do it? I'm not. Okay. What people don't think they are as people will all tell you, there's not a person here unless they completely think it's a hoax. There's no one that says, oh, I'm not very careful. Everyone thinks they're really careful. I worked in research for two years. I know they're not careful. They're not, they don't see little things that they touch, little things that they do. You look into the difference between a target or a shop and a, and a restaurant is you're sitting in, a, in that same space, in that non-ventilated space. And yes, you can go through and sanitize the the couch and the table. Did you get every square inch of that table? Did you get the chair where they might have stood up and touched? Did you get the every square inch of the menu, everything, the table? I, I disagree with the fact that it can be effectively sanitized between people. If and I don't know what to do. Here's the thing. We we had a $3 trillion package that they wanted to put through, and half of the government didn't want to let us do that. So if if yeah, we got to think outside the box altogether. Nothing can go back to normal. We are going to have, and by the way, just for the record, I haven't worked since March 7th. I'm a stand-up comedian, so it's not like... No, oh, I, I know. It's stuff. bad. I haven't yeah. worked at all. I've got nothing. I don't know where the hell my rent is coming from from next month, but I'm still saying in, in the interest of what is safe to do, it's the way it's transmitted, the distance that it travels, the way that you breathe, the way that you cough, it's out there and people aren't safe. People aren't doing what they're supposed to do. And you don't see all the different ways. It's people have their mask all over everywhere. And it's 40 For LA, California, so like LA. Systems. You can't say, well, you know what? I, you know, I can go to restaurants six times a week and I haven't gotten sick yet. Well, how do you know that? Unless you've gotten tested. I've been, I've, been, I've been regularly tested. But let me ask I'm really you. super happy for you. And, and but, I, but let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. In LA, that's one of the cities that's been closed pretty much nonstop. You know, they never opened indoor dining ever. And they've had more areas closed than any state. And it didn't stop the spread there. So, yeah, what okay, so, so you're saying that by leaving it open, it would somehow get less? No, no, no. I'm not I'm not saying I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is here you've had a state that's worse than most that's been closed more than some. So like- in the most populous state. There's more chance for the shit to spread with people. There's, there's, it's, we are not, for to say that things are shut down, to say people are not doing what it is they're supposed to do, even when they think that they are. I can't tell you how many people I know that say, oh my God, I'm so incredibly safe. And then you, you see in their behavior that they're not. People don't realize how this, how easily this stuff spreads. You just hold your hand out in front of your face as you're talking and say, Peter Piper, pick the peck and see how much you can feel the air. These molecules are way smaller than that. They travel more, they are out there. So if you're gonna shut things down and we're still getting sick here, what does that say? This is one of the most communicable things that has ever come around. If you look at any, any of the, the scientists, the real scientists that are out there. And I beg to differ with your saying deaths have gone down. We had the most deaths recorded ever just recently. If you look at all of the, the hospitalizations and the deaths, they are skyrocketing. What do we do? I don't know, Dawn. I wish I had the answer for you. I don't like seeing your, you know what? As a, as a comic, your place is one of the few places I can eat when I'm drunk and shit faced after a show at 3 a.m. So I want these places to come back. I'm not, I'm not saying I want everyone to suffer, nor are any of the politicians. 
Look at the prime, I don't know, not the prime minister, but the dude from Manitoba, Canada, that just had to talk about shutting down Christmas. Go listen to what he says. Listen to the impassioned way he's speaking. It's, it's not that these governors and these people want to hurt their citizens. Do you think they want to piss off the people that are going to- I don't think anybody wants to, off? but I think that you've got a lot of bigger problems by, by keeping us closed down exactly because the government isn't reimbursing us we you know what when when andrew yang said give every american a thousand dollars i'm like what the fuck that's a thousand dollars around and we're able to when necessary flip out a twelve hundred dollar stimulus check to every single person here we can do it if we figure out a way we've got to change everything you're talking about money you're talking about pharmaceuticals everything that between the the insurance industries and the pharmaceutical industries and big company and big gas and all of those places everything needs to be ramped we need to relook at the way we are doing our lives covid-19 was a beautiful chance for us to do that to sit the fuck down and look at how we're running things in the country and how we're running things in the world and how they don't even get me started on big agro and the environment. We need to change the way we're doing everything. This is a beautiful opportunity that we're pissing away because we can't even not fight about wearing a mask. Well, it's well, actually, I do, I do think there yeah. are things being done. I think COVID has moved us into the future in certain areas, and I think things will be looked at. I think it is such an unknown, nasty disease that it caught everybody so off guard and the worst thing is in a political year, it became a battle between governors, between parties, and made things even worse for everybody. But beyond that, you've got people who are passionate about certain things and about their lives. And I don't think you're ever gonna get an entire country on the same page when they are losing what they believe is their life. They may not be losing it to COVID, but they're losing it. Their livelihood. Their livelihood. Yeah. And, and, it's, and I, I feel your passion and your pain, but I have watched grown men cry and that hurts me too. And I don't wanna say, I don't feel your pain because everything you've worked for has gone down the drain. You know, I don't know what the right answer is. This is a terrible thing that was unleashed on us and we have to find a way to solve it. And I don't want to judge anybody for their beliefs or their opinions or their pains because it is nobody's fault. All right. We have a caller. Shocking. Um, you, let Jenny, you let Jenny McNulty loose, and now we have callers. <laughs> All right, let's do this. I, I just, this was, I, you, know, I, you know, I'm never quiet, ever. This was pretty cool. Um, <laughs> so, uh, caller, 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 caller. Do we have a caller? Yes. Who is this? Please state your name. This is Joe. This is Joe. Joe Papadonitz. Hi, Joe. This is Joe. Joe. Hey, hey, hi, Joe. everybody. I just want to say two things. Number one, if in the beginning, our jackass narcissistic president would have actually stepped up, set an example and had people wear the masks to prevent the spread, we would have been in much better shape. As a result, people did not do that. They thought it was an infringement. Some thought it was an infringement on their personal rights to decide whether or whether to, or not to wear a mask. Totally fucking selfish. Hey Joe, I love okay? you, but that's just the, a hypothesis. The easiest not thing to do would have been to wear a mask, keep the distance, that would have stopped the spread. Because that didn't happen, that did not happen. We saw spikes. We saw mm -hmm. people getting together, not wearing masks. That's why we're in the position we are now. Yeah, that's all I'm gonna say. Over and out. Thank you, Joe. Oh, no. <laughs> you know, All right, I, we have I, we have another caller. Do we still have another caller? Christian? My name is, my name is Kim. Can you hear hi, me? Hi, Kim. Yes, we can. Welcome hi. to the Green Sheets. I, I, hi, I'm sorry this isn't political, but I just wanted to call in to say that I'm a huge fan of Don LaFrieda. I think she is an amazing, amazing woman. She, helped me a lot in my life and I wanted to help take this opportunity to say thank you to her and just I appreciate her as a person and 
uh, appreciate her encouragement, and I'm I'm just rooting for her all the time. So thank you Hi, so Kim, much, Dawn. And thank you, thank you, Kim. <laughs> Is she a good boss? Are you a good boss, Dawn? I'm not her boss. <laughs> well, you're not. Yeah, I, I don't work for her. She just, I just, at Providence, I got me in touch with her a few years ago, and she helped me to meet Sharon Glass, which is another one of my heroes. And so I'm just um, very privileged to know her. I've never met her in person, but we keep in touch uh, via Facebook. And I just, I think she's a, a, just a wonderful, inspirational woman, and I love her. So I thank you for giving me this opportunity to say that. <laughs> well, you're welcome, and thank you for watching, and uh, I'll take it. <laughs> I thank, you. thank you. Dawn, thank, I, thank you I, so I, much. I've enjoyed, I've been, enjoyed the commentary with my uneducated ear. I've, I've enjoyed everything. I'm sorry I'm not giving a more profound comment, but thank you so much. <laughs> welcome. Thank you. Have a great thank, weekend. Thank you for calling in. Thank I appreciate you. it. Watching the show. Kim, that Thank was a, a delightful comment, and and I would like to add to that, Dawn. I have I, I that's why I hated to talk. You look. This is this is taken apart families. This is divorced people. This is a the way people feel feel around this is a big issue. But over and above all that, I think it's amazing that you were able to do what you do. You, if I'm not mistaken, you're the the biggest franchisee of Denny's, correct? I think on the second, the there's second. a large group of men that own. Okay, but see, it took a group of men to do what you did. Right. <laughs> I really appreciate you as a woman and as, and like I said, I can't tell you how many times my drunk ass has been at Denny's. I love, I love the store. I just, this is just something that, that makes me a little batty. That's all. So I, 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 well, I, I think it makes all of us batty, you know, yeah. and, and I think that there's a lot of great minds trying to solve the problem. And, and I believe that we've we've worked pretty fast there's been a lot of damage that's been done but i think i do think we're on the right track and i have a lot of faith and i think if we all work together we're going to get there and now we should talk about something other than hey, covid i'm going okay wait i'm moving on so <laughs> on you have two kids you have twins i do i do i have the coolest kids if i dialed up god and i said make me two beautiful boys i couldn't have gotten anything better you oh, also have a very long-term relationship. Yes. 26 years. Wow. I think 26 and a half. Almost 27. And does she, how did you meet her? So we met uh, through friends. Uh, we were both in other relationships, but I had a girlfriend who always knew we were meant to be together. And uh, when both of us were broke up from our our other partners uh my friend invited us on a date and didn't tell us we were both going to be there and uh that was it we've been together ever since and twins and 27 years later so not only is she the second she's the only woman and a lesbian one for our team okay <laughs> <laughs> I'm back in the minority yet again. <laughs> okay. It's all good. It's all good. We got to have, we have a little diversity. Yeah. Well, this thing's twin. interesting. So, so who, um, who gave birth to the twin? Are they twin? Are they identical yeah. twins? They're fraternal. Oh, they're fraternal. Oh. And um, they're, they're just the best, best boys on the planet. I, seriously, they, they delight me every day. Oh. Tell her that John Sandra Vald says hi. She's watching. Tell her I love her. I love that girl. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, and Julie Monroe said pancakes or omelets at Denny's. Pancakes <laughs> and skillets. I like omelets, but pancakes and skillets are my favorites. Uh, <laughs> are you guys going to be doing any like plant-based stuff there? Uh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and we have Beyond Burger now oh, already. Good. Oh, look at that. I'm All sure right, we have another caller. We have another caller. I love when people call in. Hi, welcome to Between the Sheets. Who's calling? It's me, you all, Sandra Balls. Sandra oh. Balls! Sandra <laughs> Chica. Hi, up, everyone. Girl? Oh, my God. All my favorites in one place. What? what? Which one's your real favorite? <laughs> We're waiting. <laughs> this is my real don't answer. Favorite. Don't, don't do it. Just don't even answer, Sandra. We already all know the answer. It's each of us. Totally. So, Sandra, 
Because Sandra's been actually, yes. as I've mentioned this before, Sandra, 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 she, um, when I had the second incarnation of my podcast, she was a rotating co-host and then she wanted to be, went on to bigger and better fame and fortune. Um, but uh, Sandra, tell everyone what's going on with you. You might as well plug it, um, what, what you're working on. I might as well plug it. That's what she said. Um, <laughs> sorry, that was that was, that was your last between the sheets incarnation. Well, <laughs> December 13th, I am excited, excited, excited because we're going to have a Latina Christmas special special. So we're going <laughs> virtual and Sharon Glass is hosting. Ooh. I'm so excited. You know it's really be a funny? Between, I'm, let me uh, interrupt. Be... We're all one step removed from Sharon Glass. Oh, no shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the Kevin Bacon, the six degrees. Is right, stuff. exactly. Yes. Yes, to Glass. We are, it's a behind the scenes sneak peek. She's moderating it. We're, she's interviewing us. We're going to have, you know, uh, videos and pictures and, you know, our, talk about how this came to be, the origins of Latina Christmas. Sharon's seen it twice. Dawn's seen it. Jenny's seen it every year. Jenny has seen <laughs> it every year since it started. Damn, She's that means you're her favorite, supporter. Jenny. I and I thought so. I, I was. Win. Darn. I do, I win. <laughs> you totally win. I've only seen it twice. <laughs> and I must be yes, shit because I haven't fucking seen it at all. It is and amazing. it's so and this good. Is, it's this so free, good. Right? Sandra, it's free. Yeah, the you're talking about. Yes, it is a virtual. It's free. Go to latinachristmasspecial.com and Give us your email, or give us your name, and we'll send you the link. And you will be accepting tips, correct? We're actually, we uh, are, are uh, accepting contributions for Toys for Tots. Uh, we're going to give nice. a huge percentage of the contributions to Toys for Tots and also for future uh, productions. I was going to say predictions. Productions <laughs> of Latina That's the Christmas. next show. Um, yeah. yeah, that's next. <laughs> So, yes, we are, I mean, I'm working on the show now, and I took a little break and went on Facebook and found you all. Thank you for your for your points of view. You know, it, it, it's a tough, tough emotional subject, but I learned a lot from from listening to everyone. I got a little angry there for a little bit, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I think there's therapy for that. There's therapy. <laughs> when this COVID lifts, Comedians love Denny's. There's got to be like a comedy show, something, because that's where we go. I know, and I love all the pictures you send me when you're at Denny's. It warms my heart. It's like, where's Waldo? You know? <laughs> no, she sends me pictures of herself at Denny's. It, it, it totally makes my day. <laughs> yes, when I'm on the road and I like stop to eat, I'm like, I want to go to Denny's. I want to go to Denny's. I always take a picture of it to Dawn. <laughs> well, thank you, Sandra. Um, and uh, we hope to see you virtually real soon, people. Um, Sandra, what's the link December again? December 13th. And the link? Latina, LatinaChristmasSpecial.com. Thank you, love. Thank you all. Love you. Bye, y'all. Love, love you, so Sandra. Bye. Bye. So Dawn, can I ask, do your Denny's have the old sign or the new sign? So we do have the old sign in some locations where there, if you have a city ordinance where if you change the sign, you have to, like if you remodel, you have to lower it. So if that's the case, they let us keep the old sign, but usually we're required to uh, modify our signs and make them the newer, the newer standard. But we have a few old ones but but wait I want to get back to kids for one second because I have these two wonderful boys and I want to talk for one second about our family vacations has, has anybody heard about them it's what Rosie and Rosie O'Donnell and her ex Kelly did mm -hmm. and when my boys were three we started taking this vacation and because everybody's talking about Sharon Glass I should <laughs> tell you that I met Sharon Glass in a casino on this vacation mm -hmm. uh, and we became fast friends and she thought I was the only straight woman on the trip and yada, yada, yada. So she hung with me only to learn I was not straight. And anyway, um, for any of those gay people listening, if in 2021, you ever want to take an amazing vacation 
whether you have a family or not, it is the best time you could ever have. And the entertainment industry and the travel industry is really going to need help yes. and the restaurant industry. So I encourage everybody to support you know, those industries. And we've had so much fun over the years. And my boys, every year their school takes a big trip to Europe or somewhere. And last year I'd said to my boys, I said, you guys want to go on your Italy trip with your school uh, or on the our family vacation? And my boys said, mom, we see our friends at school all the time. We want to go on the our family trip. And it just spoke volumes to, they want to take the gay vacation. My 16 year old boys <laughs> would rather go on the gay family vacation than with their buddies to Italy. And I just, that just tells you there's such a great- there ain't no party like a gay party. I don't know. Right, like like gay vacation. <laughs> we bring our straight friends now too. Oh, that's gaycation, that's the one, gaycation. The gaycation, <laughs> yeah, it's you know, the best time ever. And you should have, you should have Kelly on the show, Kelly and Greg on the show sometime because they have so many great fun adventures. Well, Dawn, and I would love geared to. towards adults. Well, you know what? I would love to. I don't know them. So at some point, if since you do and you'd like to make that bridge and introduction, I would love to have them on. Yeah, yeah, as soon as travel opens up, you should have them because they're lovely. They have so many great trips that they do and they are so warm and loving and such a great group of people. We've made lifelong friends all over the world. It's, it's just a great experience. So my other question for you is, um, besides obviously you work, we know that you you do what you do well. What do you do in your spare time? I mean, besides the gaycation. Oh my gosh. So um, let's see, I do. <laughs> so I sit on boards and committees. I did three seasons of a TV show called Elevator Pitch. I do a lot of podcasts, webinars, uh, guest speaking events. Um, I, I, I just have, have a very busy schedule. So you're a type A workaholic, but because you love what you do and it's passion, then it's fun. Yeah, it is fun. You know, it's really been interesting this year because everything has been COVID related. I've done a lot of, uh, a lot of things around COVID, a lot of webinars, podcast uh, stories, just all revolving around survival tactics, how people can save their businesses. And because we haven't been able to film as much, so, so much has been computer-based, which it's nice to not have to do all the hair and makeup and go in a studio, but something gets lost. And I found this year that I've really missed the meeting and just the things you learn and what you gain face-to-face. -face. I agree with you because this show is never done on Zoom. And, you know, yeah. it's, we're always around a room and a round table. And, you know, it's just, I mean, the shows, everyone, I mean, everyone has received the show and, and has understood and adapted to it and they like it and they still watch it. But as a person, I'm very social. I miss the energy of being with people. Like we had a photo shoot today and this is the first photo, big photo shoot. I had since COVID started. And yes, we did the rules and the guidelines and the masks and the shields. I mean, we were, but like I had a DJ there and everyone was just, we were all dancing, obviously socially distanced. Dancing. Even like Sharon, I mean, Sharon Osbourne doesn't dance, but like Carrie Ann and Ava, I mean, it was the talk people. So we did the talk photo shoot. Yeah, I know all those girls. Yep. I was there um, not too long ago. But the thing is, you know, this is the first time they weren't on the show because the show was very structured. This was like a photo shoot and my photo shoots are always parties. Um, if you don't enjoy it, I, 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 and we had the DJ, the people, hair, makeup, we were all dancing around and, and just so giddy because this is the first time that first of all, we were doing, at least for me, I was doing my job the way I, I missed it, but it was like just a big, I don't know, flow of energy and, and, and were you nervous? Was everybody nervous or Absolutely tense at all? Not. Absolutely not. Because we've all been tested. We all had the masks. We were all in a safe environment. We were in our own bubble for the day. Um, you know, and we are very precautious because the talent 
you know, when they're on the set, you know, they can't wear the mask. We're taking pictures. So everyone was very respectful of that. But because most of us have been together for eight, 10, 12, I mean, Sharon and I are the only two left from the pilot that actually worked on the original show. And that's 12 years ago, 11 years ago. Wow. So it's, but, but the families, it's a, it's a great, but we were all just dancing around. Everyone's like, you know what? This is the most fun I've had since March. <laughs> oh, since I'm sure. March. And, and it was, and everybody left happy, which sometimes doesn't happen at photo shoots, not the talk, but I mean, you know, people are complaining about this. Everyone, even when there were little hicks or hiccups that would normally set certain people off, no one cared. No one cared about the little hiccups. It was just, we are just grateful so to be people. out, grateful to be out with people that we really enjoy and have fun with. And, you know, I mean, literally, I was so spent and I was driving home going, holy shit, I have to do a show tonight because it wasn't that I was spent because it was so hard. It was the amount of energy that I put out and then the energy I was receiving. It had been like a, a, a dry sponge that all of a sudden opened up and just became like poured on with tons of water and, and a new breath of life. So yes, if we do follow the mask and, 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 and the basic things, we could still have that, whatever the new norm is, but people have to follow those guidelines and precautions. You know, I don't you love know, the hardest mask. thing. I was there at six o'clock in the morning. I didn't take my fucking mask off till 5 p.m. Oh. I hated it. I mean, I went, look, I went to the side and put the mask up and took a couple of deep breaths. Okay. Yeah. But I don't like the mask thing, but I know that it's essential to do. But, you know, I will say this to Jenny's point. There have been some gifts in COVID. There have been. So like I used to travel a ton for work all the time to either do the show, business meetings, whatever. Got to have dinner with my kids, you know? I learned my hair wasn't as gray as I thought it was. <laughs> I got to, I haven't worn mascara in eight months. <laughs> you know, I haven't bought any makeup in eight months. I haven't bought any shoes, any clothes. I mean, there are gifts. Well, no, I, well, I, I, did, did the, I, I did the opposite. I can, I, I do still wear makeup because I wanted to make, I just, Wanted to feel good about myself. <laughs> I went out and bought a shit ton of clothes. I mean, Randy St. Nicholas was the photographer today and she has her own clothing line, you know? And like right before COVID, I ordered a shit ton of like custom made wardrobe because I was going out all the time. And I just saw her today. I mean, we touched base and she's like, are you ever going to pick up these fucking clothes? I'm like, well, <laughs> I will now. But now that was the... You know, the, you got the, nowhere to go to wear them. Well, but the point is, I'm sitting here going, I don't need pants or skirts anymore. Now I need stuff from the waist up because I'm doing my <laughs> show. You know, I can wear my pajamas and my fuzzy slippers. It doesn't matter. But, you know, I, I mean, there are tons of gifts uh, that COVID has given us. And I mean, for me, and I, I'll get a little introspective, um, you know, I, I, I learned to be able to be okay with being with myself. Um, and you know, I'm not a, I'm not, a, I don't like to be alone. I don't get lonely, but I don't like to, I was an only child. I had a lot of alone time growing up and I'm a, and I'm an extrovert. Um, so this whole thing made me get like, look inward and really sort of look at my behavior and my patterns and look back on just certain people and things and, and, and situations that actually happened that I wasn't happy with. And, and I took my own sort of responsibility for things, but it really made me go inward to sort of look at myself and say, you know what, you contributed to X, Y, and Z. So, you know, how do you work on that? And I, so I did a lot of work. I did a lot of work and introspection on myself because in the beginning of COVID, we started working from home, but the film business was shut down. So, you know, there was, 
you know, I mean, I worked, but there wasn't a lot to work on. And I'm not, I'm very fortunate that we continued, that they didn't furlough us, you know? So I was fortunate, but it did give me time to sort of be introspective and say, you know, maybe the time, maybe the reason you're out and about and running around is because you're trying not to deal with certain things that you need to deal with. Mm. And, and, you know, it's like I say, I grew up, you know, there was a thing on Facebook. I'm a big Facebook quoter that said the people who knew you a year ago or two years ago, we'll have to be this is not the same person I am now. And it is about, I think, a lot of work. And I think with COVID, there was a lot of silence. There was a lot of quietude. There was a lot of isolation. You know, and I think it's it's also getting back to basics. I mean, I remember the big, I mean, I love to cook. In the beginning of COVID, I cooked every day. I baked my own bread. I made my own butter for Christ's fucking sake. It was a little house on the goddamn prairie here in Burbank, you know? Um, you know, but I'll tell you the first time that they said takeout is open, I called DoorDash, damn it. Uh, you know? But it is truly a gift, a gift, and and it's a really a gift. And I think we can look at the negativity of what's out there, but I think it also, as Jenny stated, you know, it, it, there's a lot of if you look, if you know what to look at, it's a lot of positivity that has come out of it, you know. And I'm very hopeful, you know. It, I don't care if people are Republican or disagree with me or whatever. I am very hopeful that the election turned out the way it did. Um, I, I, I know, and then by the way, people, just because Biden and Kamala are in charge, you know, truly do not expect things will turn around overnight. There's a lot of, in my opinion, there's a lot of damage that was done in the past, uh, with the past president. So, you know, just give Biden a chance, give Kamala a chance, you know, um, let them do what they think is best which I believe what they think is the best um, for this country, just be patient. Um, you know, it's just like when, was, was it Clinton and then Bush, was it, was it Bush Jr. and then Clinton came in or Clinton came, who was, who was first, Jr. First or it Clinton? Was, first it was Clinton, then it was Bush, Bush, Bush Jr. after Clinton. For eight years, right? And then Obama came in, is that, am I correct? That, right? And mm -hmm. then everyone expected Obama overnight to undo the shit that Bush Jr. did in eight years. Mm -hmm. um, so I think, you know, no matter what your political affiliation is, you know, this is a time also with COVID that, you know, we sort of have to come together. I mean, we just sort of have to come together and it's not about Democrat, Republican. It's what's best for this country, what's best for our rights, what's best for this economy. You know, if we could just really people just be on the same page and be patient, I think we can get through a lot of things. It's not a mere it's not a miracle, but at least we have the awareness and maybe we can work through it. And people feel free to disagree. I'm not, I'm not here. So that's no, we're all going to be here tomorrow. We're resilient. We are all going to be here tomorrow. It may not be exactly the way we want it, but we're all going to be here tomorrow. It, I think it, you know, everything was fear. It's every fear is kind of at the bottom of the ugliest of everything, whether people overcompensate and become, you know, their fear that they think they're not whatever. So then they act a certain way. And I think people are just scared. I think if you look at, you know, who some of his followers were, and by his, I mean the uh, toddler menace in the White House right now, they are, you know, a lot of old white boys that are afraid of losing their majority. They're afraid of losing that old boy network, that good old boy network. And for, you know, for all of the, the things that people are afraid of are already there. We had all those racial tensions, all everything. And then you put literally the scariest freaking thing that's happened in a hundred years, on top of all of that, yep. I think until we feel safe again, and I don't know how that happens. You know, I mean, I don't, I don't know, I don't know what any of the answers are. I'm just saying that I think, you know, I keep seeing this post on Facebook where everybody's like, uh, it's, it's fr from the other side. I hate to say the other side. It's, it's the Republicans are saying we, you know, they're telling us now to just get over the election. Well, we remember this, and we remember this, and we remember this, and for every little thing that the Republican side says, we remember this, the Democrats can turn around and say, oh yeah, well, we remember Trump doing this and we remember that and we remember that. And I think 
to a certain level, we kind of forget all that shit and start. I no, I think everybody just needs to stop. Right. I think, and, yeah. I think all the hatred needs to stop. Everybody just needs to pause and just say, you know, let's heal our country. I know, but how do we do, you know, how do we do that pause? That's the well, I think that it's the like, people how do we who get need that? to quit gloating and the people who yeah. lost need to accept it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and not in all now, we need to quit saying fuck Trump. We need the Trump people to quit saying what they're saying. We just need to just accept where we are and move on and say there was a higher plan. And I believe that the universe gives us what we're supposed to have and let it and let it be. That's just the way I operate. But I am tired of the hatred and I'm tired of the hatred on both sides. And it's not isolated Democrat or Republican. It is equally both sides are responsible and it needs to stop. But how do we I watch I've watched it both ways and I, I don't participate either way because I belong to a brand that has customers that believe both ways. And so I, I you know. I respect what everybody's beliefs are for whatever their reasons are, but I just, I think the hatred in our country needs to stop. I love what Gayanne's done. She's gone inside and I, I know I've gone inside in this time because we, we've been forced to be, you know, to not see our families. When my son wouldn't hug me for six months, it was very difficult for me. And I went inside too. And that's a safe place for us to go. We're our own best friends and we have to, we soothe ourselves in this time actually of mourning. We have lost the lives that we knew and it isn't going to change and we're having to deal with it. But the freeways are very, very nice and clean. <laughs> the freeways <laughs> are the best they've thing, ever right? been. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. they have. Yeah. So everyone, I, um, believe it or not, it's 828. It's time for us to say goodbye. Um, I think this is probably one of the most controversial <laughs> shows. Oh, so yeah. sorry. No, it's, you know what? It's great. I love it. Um, because you know, next, I mean, the end, I mean, the third, I got to look on my calendar, the third Friday in December, which is December 18th. Um, we're going to have a whole other show. It's, uh, we have Thelma Houston. Yeah. Oh, wow. Thelma Houston will be on, um, as Cara called it a sing-along Christmas. Um, <laughs> that sounds Christmas. like so much more fun than COVID. No, but that's the thing, you know, <laughs> that's why I kind of love doing what we do because first of all, you know, we, you know, like one day we'll have Sharon on, one day we'll have Thelma on, then we'll have someone, an entrepreneur like you, you know, that, that it's, it's just so much fun to just be able to bring people on and, you know, have a discussion and still, have maybe separate opinions or opposite ends of the spectrum, but you know what? We're all still smiling at each other. And I think, you know, basically, you know, what we do on the show sort of is what people should. And I hate to use the word should because it's telling someone what to do, but I think everyone deep down knows that we all need to be on the same page. I mean, we all need to work together as a community you know put as dawn said put the left or the right or the the, the negativity and the dis the, and, and the nastiness you know that doesn't get anyone that's very that's childish and very immature and i think you know if we all are aware i think once you have awareness and acceptance and we can move forward because we people we're all on the on the we're talking about you know, some of the Democrats, some of the Republicans, and none of the whatever. You know, we're all holding each other back to be to be unified because it's everybody wants to win, and it's not about winning. It's joining together for the greater good. And we have a big fucking problem to solve. <laughs> yeah, yes, we do. You know, and 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 that probably is more crippling than COVID-19. And it, and it affects all parties, all races, every country in the world. And if it isn't a good enough reason to come together, I don't know what is. Exactly. So um, everyone watching, um, I'm going to take you around the room just to say our goodbyes to our esteemed uh, guest hosts, 
guest co-host and of course our wonderful guest um jenny mcnulty thank you for joining i love the irish in you when you let loose it's very sexy um <laughs> and very, say yeah. i've been banned now from any denny's in the united states <laughs> never <laughs> never <laughs> never we welcome we welcome a, a difference of opinion <laughs> Um, Jenny, repeat again your Facebook page and what you're um, doing. It is, as you see my name up there, Jenny McNulty Fan is the Facebook page because it's on not my personal page, but the yeah, Jenny McNulty Fan. Uh, my show is Monday, Wednesday, Friday at one o'clock Pacific live. Um, and we've got six more or seven more reasons why 2020 didn't suck coming up. So stay tuned. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. McNulty. Um, Cara Noble, Mrs. Right. Claus, what's going on? I'm, I'm going to continue to dress in the Christmas vein <laughs> um, and go to Ralph's. And nice jingle bells, Noble, by the way. What, darling? Nice jingle bells. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I dressed up today and went to Ralph's in a Christmas outfit. Adorable. <laughs> you know what? Is there anything more fabulous <laughs> in life right now? You know, what? I swear every once in a while, I just want to wear the heels and, and the clothes I bought to Ralph's with a mask. Um, you know, I mean, you know, you know, it's just, it would make me excited because I don't, because where are we going to wear these clothes anymore? Uh, Mar Shane. Thank you, Cara. Mar Shane. Hi. Hi. Uh, <laughs> so, well, I am in the midst of doing a lot of art projects and my website is my name, marashaneart.com. And you can find me on Facebook, uh, Mara Shane Custom Designs, uh, Mara Shane Art on Instagram. Thank so you. I'm working on a piece right now. Actually, I'm working on a piece for one of our co um, our co hosts, that Delisha, that she's going to pick up on Tuesday. Beautiful. So you'll get to see it then. Wonderful. Well, thank you for sharing, Mara, and always a pleasure to have you. That sounded so fucking canned. <laughs> Thank you, Cheryl. Now, uh, for always the controversial one in the bunch, uh, Roxanne Tristan, Rosen. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so confused by that. I just, it, I don't understand that, but <laughs> she'll tell me at some point. <laughs> so, I will tell you. So, my stage name is Roxanne Rosen. I do um, acting in Hollywood. Um, I haven't let any one of you know that. As I opposed to acting in Pacoima? What the fuck is that? That was dumb. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> I haven't let any one of you know yet that I did get a movie deal for next year. So super happy about that. Very cool. yes. um, I have a nickname. It's it's Tristan and my real name is Tanya, but no one can pronounce it right. So no one's allowed to call me that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I got it now. There you go. <laughs> so not a stripper name or anything like that. Um, so yeah, so thank you. It, you know, whoever wants to be friends with me on, on Facebook, Roxanne Rosen, you can find me. I do a lot of different speaking engagements, acting in the industry, hosting, um, just everything. Why, well, thank you. Thanks for coming back. Thanks for thank hanging you. out with us. We will go in the studio soon because like I say, I do want to go back in the studio. We are cons considered an essential business, but we have to be at a certain capacity. So I don't know. I, I keep saying every month, well, maybe we'll go back next month. And then I, I don't know, then I think because of my mom, I think I worry more. So I'm like, nah, I'll do it from Zoomy. Um, just to be safe and cautious, just because I'm not only taking care of me, but I've got to take care of her. She's the most important thing in my life. So, um, and I don't want to be the one to give her a premature death sentence. <laughs> Um, I just don't. That, I, like, that, I'm Italian. That the guilt would kill me. Um, mm -hmm. Really, like beyond. Like I think Italians, Jews, and Irish. That guilt sucks, man. <laughs> um, yeah, you could never, never recover. Not even enough fucking therapy to recover from that shit. Um, Don, where can people find you? Um, uh, you know, what are you doing? Are there any um, charities or events or anything that you're promoting that would yes. love? Yes, yes, yes. Well, we're always at uh, Denny's.com. I support No Kid Hungry all year long, uh, providing meals to kids across America. Uh, they get meals even when they're not in school. And um, what I was going to say <laughs> is that while uh, the entertainment industry is essential now, restaurants in LA are still not essential. So support dining out the best you can. And uh, support any local businesses because it's a tough time for everybody, especially during this holiday season. And 
Exactly. I'm on Facebook as long as there's takeout and takeout. As long as there's takeout and delivery. Yes, there's takeout, there's delivery. We have DoorDash, Postmates, Uber Eats, all of the above. Um, uh, hopefully some outdoor dining will come back, but you know, the industry has been hard hit and you know, love the neighbor best you can. Yeah, small, I mean, support big and small businesses. Yeah, whatever you can do. Yeah, it, it, you know, it's all relative. We think mom and pop, but it doesn't matter whether you're a big business or a small business. It's all the same if you're independently owned. Absolutely. Thank you for, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks I, for the invite. Sorry for all the COVID talk. Would love to come back sometime and talk, you know, Christmas carols, you know. I'll, I'll, I'll hey, look, you know what? I'm jealous of Thelma Houston. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what is her song? Don't leave me this way. Uh, <laughs> don't leave me this way. Um, but everyone, thank you so much, Dawn. And yes, absolutely. You know, anyone, you know. I'll I, come I, back after Sharon Gless does her her book comes out and I'll diss all the stories on her. <laughs> and I know I, I mean, know the real story. I know. And I've known her, I've known her a long time. Longer than I've known her. I've known her since 1989. Um, so I'm not in the book, which is good. Um, but I know that I, I probably was around some of the stories that were in the book. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you were. So um, everyone, thank you so much for joining us here on Between the Sheets. We're on the first and third Friday of every month at 7 p.m. Pacific. Um, you can always find us on Facebook, Between the Sheets Podcast. Um, and follow me on Instagram, QTE Brat. Also, um, even though I say tomorrow, it probably won't be. Um, oh my God, my hair just looked weird right now, like real poofy. Um, we have a follow us um, on YouTube. I mean, the YouTube channel, Between the Sheets Podcast, all the shows go up. And then the, uh, the audio version is all across all platforms, Amazon, Google Play, iTunes, yada, 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 yada. So um, I hope you enjoy the show. I always say, you know, but for you guys, we wouldn't be doing this. Um, you, give, you give us an opportunity to sort of, you know, speak our minds, your minds, always call in, you know. Um, it's, um, you know, it's like the Beatles song, come together. Um, we really do need to come together. And um, sometimes the difference of opinions that we have, some of them are important and um, some of them are just really petty. So, you know, if you're gonna pick your battles, pick the right ones and pick it with more of unification in mind instead of separation. Um, we're all in this together. And the only way we're gonna make it out is to be together. Stand by each other, help your neighbor. I don't care, Republican, Democrat, it doesn't matter. It really is all about here. It's the heart space and the heart energy. And that's, and it's on a really a spiritual level. And I'm not talking woo woo and I'm not talking Catholic or religion. It really is about standing in the truth of who you are and loving each other and literally loving each other and not just saying it for, you know, bullshit. I love you. It's, I mean it. And I want your well being. And that all starts with loving yourself first because you can't love anybody else unless you love yourself first. So in these times of reflection, um, you know, just do, be the best person you can be. And maybe Amen. you can solve a problem. So on that, I thank you all and all and all. I do love you guys truly. I appreciate all of you. Um, Dawn, welcome to the family. Thank and, you. And um, and with everyone, I just say have a safe weekend. Um, yeah, do the masks, do the safe distancing. Um, I just had a photo shoot that you know we had to go through hoops to pull, uh, to pull to pull out. And guess what? It worked. So there is a, we can have a normalcy within the new protocol, within the protocol. And it's literally a fucking mask. So, and washing the hands and not spitting on each other. So other than that, I mean, I'm, I just broke it down. I don't mean to be contrite or being really, but it seriously is just, everybody just has to be responsible for themselves. And if you don't feel comfortable, then you know, don't fucking go out or don't fucking do something, but do support, do support each other, support the businesses. We've got to keep things afloat. That's it. And with that, I love all of you. Thanks for watching. And as always, namaste. 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 Bye.